That was a lovely meal. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. Evenings can get pretty lonely for a single guy around here. Fancy a nightcap? Well. Nice pub, I know, on the way back. All right, one brandy, one orange juice. Oh, no, 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 let me. You paid for the meal. Put your purse away. My treat tonight. Bit of a dark horse, your sergeant. I've seen him in here before. Yes. Just one for me, Oscar. I think he's had enough already. I guess since Tom died, we've all felt the need to... Get on with life. It's precious. Yeah. And that's what Tom would want, so let's brighten up, eh? Well, she's very attractive, his new girlfriend, I must say. <laughs> I met her at the hospital once. She's got a teenage son. Um... Richard? Yeah. It's Vivian Keane. Yeah. Works at the bank. Anything else we can help you girls with? It was a really nice evening. Thank you. She has to end so soon. Well, there's, uh, there's always another time. If you'd like to, that is. What do you think? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a bit out of practice at all this. Don't be daft. Shall I see you in? Here we are, Mrs. Garbett. Well, you look as if you had a nice trip. There we are. We'll soon have you home. Highly tuned carburetors can be a bit temperamental. <laughs> Don't believe it. Morning, Sarge. <laughs> nice day. Paperwork's got very sloppy lately. I want everyone's reports written up and on my desk by tomorrow. Right, Sarge. I'll tell them. And I've had complaints about some souped-up Mini Cooper keeps speeding through Stransford Village. Have someone check it out. Straight away, Sarge. Can I help you? Well, it's, a, it, it's rather difficult. I've, I've thought about it all night. Well, take your time. What's the matter, then? Well, he... I, I couldn't believe he'd just steal it, snatch it from me. Someone stole something from you? Yeah, my purse, my money. Well, do you know him, this thief? Yeah. It's your colleague. Sergeant Merton. We'd had a really lovely evening. I don't go out on dates very much. And, um, well, then he drove me home. Yes. Well, he, he kissed me. And then he started dropping hints about coming inside. Well, I said no. And uh, started to get out of the car. And he grabbed me. He grabbed you? Yeah. By the arm. I told him to let go, and, uh, and I got out of the car. And then what? Well, he, um, he sat there for a moment, and then I heard him get out and, uh, and follow me. He followed you out? Yeah. He turned really nasty. In what way? Well, he said that he paid for the meal and the drinks, and that surely he could expect something in return. Go on. I explained that my son was at home and I had to get up early the next morning. And he said that if that was my attitude, I should pay him back. And he just snatched my purse out of my bag, left me there and, and, and drove off. Now, did anyone else see what happened? A neighbour, passerby? No, 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 I don't think so. It was dark and uh, it's a very quiet street. What was in your purse? Forty pounds. Um, I had a 
driving license in there and a photograph of Richard. That's that's my son. You do appreciate the seriousness of your allegations. Yes. Yes, I do, but I just can't afford to lose forty pounds. Oh, he, he just suddenly changed. It seems such a perfect gentleman. Would you like to hear what he has to say? I mean, he may just have driven off without realising that the the purse had, say, fallen out inside the car. It didn't fall out. He snatched it. And he knows that, and I know that. She's made a very specific allegation, Sarge. It's absolute nonsense. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to... I know. Inform division. Go ahead. Looks like the plugs are dirty. You're supposed to have serviced this. I must have brought the old ones back by mistake. Oh, brilliant. You've just cost me a fare, a tip and a rollicking. Well, I haven't time now. Why don't you change them yourself? The new ones are inside. Now, where are you going? Allegations against a fellow police officer are always unpleasant, but we must be completely impartial. After I've seen Sergeant Burton, I'll conduct a full investigation. Ridiculous, the whole thing. She seems a nice woman. Why would she make up a thing like that? Oh, come on, it's a fit-up. I'm suspended pending an investigation. Is there anything we can do to help, Sergeant? No. It's best you have no contact with me while this is going on. Ask Sergeant Burton to leave his car here for the moment. Bellamy, check it for the purse. Or anything belonging to Mrs. Keane. You and I'll take Sergeant Burton home. Ventress, man the station. Are you feeling all right, Vernon? Why? You're showing worrying signs of having been working for a living. Oh, very funny. Just get me a Scotch Oscar. Actually, I have been working. David's left me with all the taxi work and Bernard has vanished into thin air. I mean, what do I know about changing spark plugs? Nothing, judging by the state you're in. I was hoping he'd be in here, actually. Oh, Bernie? Oh, I saw him half an hour back. He was uh, off to the doctors. Doctors? What's he gone to the doctors for? Well, maybe he's sickening for something. Sickening? The way he serviced my taxi was sickening. Search of a lifetime To tell when it's over Search of a story It's never been done Who's she? My sister, with my parents and me. Hardly relevant, is it? She might have been a girlfriend. Mrs. Key might have been jealous of another relationship you had. No, we hardly knew each other. Last night was our first date. I'm usually a good judge of character. Nothing upstairs, sir. Uh, check the kitchen. So you've no idea why she'd blacken your name? I haven't a clue. We met while I was cashing cheques at the bank. She seemed very friendly. I asked her out. Sir? What is this? What's going on? Well, we didn't put it there. You tell us. Forty pound in cash. Driving license. Mrs. Vivian Key. This is a fit-up. Uh, doctor. 
Have you got a moment? Yeah, of course. My brother Bernard, has he been in to see you? You just missed him. I've seen him a few times recently, actually. A few times? What's wrong with him? I'm afraid I can't discuss it. You need to ask him yourself. I have absolutely no idea how it got there. Does anyone else have access to your house? Neighbour, cleaner? You say Mrs. Keane has never been to the house. So, presumably, we can discount the possibility of her having planted it there. Unless she gained access after I left for work this morning. There was no sign of a break-in. No obvious sign, that's true. If she gained access in daylight, Presumably there's a chance one of your neighbours could have seen her. My house is overlooked, yes. Right. So you notice no one unusual here at all this morning? No, nothing, sorry. Oh, well, thanks for your help. Okay, thanks. Any luck? No. No, nobody saw anything out of the ordinary. Usual deliveries, you know, postman, milkman, blood from the gas board. But no suspicious-looking females. Well, someone's been very clever here. Unless he actually did take it. And then somebody's been very stupid. What are you doing? Uh, just looking for some paperwork. Something stark about the skeletal outline of trees in winter. What? I've been for a walk. It's funny how you take things like that for granted. Look at things through different eyes, and it's like you're seeing things for the very first time. Bernard, what's wrong? I told you, dirty spark plugs. Not the car. It's you I'm concerned about. Me? Since when? You're only interested in me when you want something. Oh, Bernard, that's a very hurtful thing to say. Oh, all right, so I'm not always thoughtful. But that's going to change. You're my flesh and blood. I'm going to take care of you. What? I bet you've not been eating properly. How about a nice cup of tea and a balm cake? No, thanks. I'm really not hungry. No one saw anyone acting suspiciously near his house. No, but it isn't conclusive just because nobody saw anything. The stolen purse was found in his home. No one else has keys, no sign of a break-in. If our suspect wasn't a police officer, wouldn't you find that pretty conclusive? Dennis Ian Merton, I'm charging you with theft. Contrary to Section 1 of the Theft Act. I'm bailing you to appear before Ashford Lynn Magistrates Court under Section 38 of the Magistrates Act 1952. You must inform us... If I plan to travel anywhere, don't worry, I'll be around. And I'll take your warrant card. I understand you recently passed your sergeant's exams. Yes, but I've no actual experience. You know the ropes here. You've got the qualification. Leave it with me. Are you okay? You winced. Is it heartburn, indigestion? Leave me alone. Sir? 
I'm not sure in the circumstances if I'm the right person to be acting sergeant. Why take his sergeant's exams if you don't want responsibility? You won't get very far with an attitude like this. It might be better if the longest serving officer stood in. All right, let Ventress do it. Sergeant, half a bit up, please. This is on the house. It's good to see you. Thanks. Not many people seeing that at the moment. No, I did hear the news. OK, come through to the snug. We'll have a talk. It was uh, this detective sergeant I knew. Along with his wife, he was reported for cruelty to his kids. In the end, it turned out to be a neighbour, making false allegations. Just because his son was nicked for stealing. I've had my fair share of mud slung at me in my time. Usually there's a reason, though. With her, I'm totally baffled. Hmm. Well, she does have a son. Aye, Richard, he's called. And to your knowledge, he's never been in trouble. I've certainly never come across him. I hardly even know her. Look, I realise it's tricky for you to make inquiries, but would you like me to, uh, have a sniff around? Uh, right. Uh, we'll get straight on to it, madam. Yes, Alf. Oh, there's another report of a Mini Cooper doing 80 miles an hour in Strensford. We've got to get it sorted out. Look, I have a pile of paperwork at the police house to sort out. Can't Phil do it? No. He's assisting D.I. Shiner today. Sorry to trouble you, but did you dish out these pills to my brother Bernard? I dispensed them, yes. Why? Well, I'm getting a bit concerned. To be quite honest, yes, your brother has been acting rather strangely. In what way? You see, three of these prescriptions are the same. Now, he claimed he lost two of them, so he came back for more. Speaking candidly, I think he's a bit depressed. Dr. Sumby's surgery? Depressed? What sort of employee is Mrs. Keane? The very best sort. Punctual, hardworking, conscientious, entirely trustworthy. She has an excellent career record with the bank. You know of no reason why she might hold a grudge against the police in general or Sergeant Merton in particular? Absolutely not. If she says he stole her purse, I, for one, would certainly believe her. Mrs. Keane has a son. She brought him up on her own, I gather. Yes. She's never allowed that to interfere with her work. She's an excellent mother. I had hoped to talk to her. She's not in the bank today. In view of her ordeal, I suggested she took a couple of days off. Glowing personal references. It's a false allegation. It would seem out of character. Might it be something to do with her son? I called the lad's headmaster. He's a studious boy, model pupil, never been in trouble. So that doesn't fit either. Bye. 
bro. Fifteen years has got in. A stupid little strong away career like that. Well, we've all done daft things where women are concerned, I suppose. Mike, you're supposed to be on duty. Look, I just wanted to help, if I could. Bradley, when my officers are supposed to be working, they shouldn't be pursuing private investigations, understood? Yeah. Mike, your sense of loyalty means a lot to me. You're barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. She's a first-rate woman. Look, I just want to check her background. But Mrs. Keene's references are confidential. Yes, Alan. I'm only after the truth. And if she does turn out to be a wrong one, you wouldn't want her working here in the bank, would you? Oh, well, I was, I was a bit shaken at first, but um, I'm a lot better. Your son at school at the moment? Oh, yeah. All levels next year. I've, uh, I have told him what's happened. He'd have only picked up playground gossip anyway. Of course. Serving police sergeant charged with theft. The newspapers are bound to get onto it. Are you advising me to drop it? No. I just want you to be aware of the seriousness of the case. Would you like me to get that? Uh, no, no, no. It's all right. Excuse me. Come to read the meter. Oh, uh, right. Yes, it, it's in the kitchen. I'll, I'll show you. She seems genuine enough to me. Well, it's probably a spare of the moment thing. Better how he snatches the purse, drives off, panics, hides it. Bingo. Whole career down the drain. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about that. Look, Inspector, I'm not a vindictive person. I've, I've got a great deal of respect for the police. I've. I've simply told you the truth. Then, thank you for your time, Mrs. Keane. Leonard! I've been thinking. This is the wrong sort of game for you. Funerals, coffins, burials. No wonder you get depressed. You're selling up. What do we want? I've got a mate in Scarborough who's got a novelty joke emporium. You know, squirty flowers, whoopee cushions, that sort of thing. We're going into the chuckle business, you and me. I'll soon put that smile back on that lovely face of yours. Vernon, if you want to borrow money, just ask. How much do you want? Ten or two? There you go. Can't take it with you, can you? You're only young once. Any news on the uh, speeding driver, Mike? No, Alf. I was there all afternoon. You make a very bad liar. D.I. Shiner and Phil make the driver in Strensford. Shiner wants you in my office now. Loyalty to a fellow officer is an admirable quality. Can be misplaced. I still don't believe he did it, sir. I've been checking Merton's file. Ten years ago in Leeds, D.C. Merton, as he then was, had a complaint lodged against him. A young female criminal claimed that he stole her purse when she refused him sexual favours. It's on his record. Take a look. The 
woman in Leeds withdrew it. The case never went to court, yet it stays on his record. Is that fair? Mike, all I'm saying is, do any of us really know Merton? He's not been here that long. Well, long enough. He risked his life trying to save Tom. And was devastated when he died. Look, we've just lost one good couple here. Do we really want to lose another? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mike! China says if you take time off for unofficial inquiries, you'll find yourself suspended. Understood? Yes, Alf, understood. Well, Alf's in a very difficult position, Mike. Mm. He's got a job to do. Mm. I know. Even so, I've been thinking about checking out this other woman's allegations. The one that was withdrawn. I'd be very careful if I were you. I managed to take a look at Vivian Keane's references. They're excellent. I also managed to talk to two of her previous bosses. She's as straight as a die. I'll keep digging, Oscar. There's got to be something. Uh. Vernon! Bernie not with you tonight. How is he? I don't know, Oscar. He's been to the doctors a lot. I thought he might be ill. Physically, you know. But there's also these mood swings. I mean, I'm... I'm beginning to think the problem may be more up here. You think he might be losing his marbles? Hi there. Bernie, you all right? Sure. Sure. Just get up for a fancy dress party or something. No. Oh, I mean, you've got to be with it, haven't you? Girls today like a casual style, don't they? Oh, well, depending on a... Yes, uh, sort of. Yeah, I need another prescription. Uh, Dr. Sumbry's out on calls. Oh, is she? Not here, then. No. Shame. You're a shame. Why not come back later? Yeah, right. Sure. Andy Shaw. Who wants to know? Mike Bradley. I'm, uh, I'm a police officer. Haven't been bothered by you lot for a while. What do you want? Well, it's, um, it's not official. It's to do with a colleague of mine who's in trouble. I thought you might be able to help. <laughs> Me help a copper? Get lost. Well, it, it concerns a DC Merton and an allegation you made against him ten years ago. Merton? What about him? <sighs> Can I come in? I've had enough of this. There is something obviously very wrong with you, Bernard. Oh. You're going to lose your whole business. Everything. Can't go on like this, Doctor. You should see him in there. I mean, one minute he's happy as Larry, spending money on stupid clothes, the next minute he's back down in the dumps again. Well, I've examined him several times. He's in reasonable physical health. I think it's all in his head. Do you think he needs to see a shrink? No, I shouldn't have thought so. But there is a clinic at the hospital. I could fix up an appointment if it'll put your mind at rest. I would be grateful. Call it three, Bob, eh? You alleged he demanded sex, then stole your purse when you refused. That's right. Well, you later withdrew the complaint. It's my word against his. I've got a record. Police put pressure on me to drop it. Mandy, I need to know the truth. Did he steal your purse? Yeah. Yeah, he did. OK. Thanks for your time. No way. bothered me for a while. 
I made the whole thing up. Why? I was young. Fallen in with the wrong crowd. Did some breakings for kicks. DC Merton spoke up for me in court. I got offered probation. Others in gang got sent down. They wanted revenge. Threatened me. Forced me to make up stories against him. It was a try-on. Who were this gang? Skull. Frank Payton and his crowd. I'm out of all that now. Been straight for years. Tell Merton I'm sorry. OK. Sit down. Thanks. Look, uh, I know you told me not to get involved, but I thought you might like to know. Mandy Shaw has admitted her story was a pack of lies. Well, I'm glad she's come clean. She might even be willing to give D.I. Shiner a statement to set your uh, past record straight. Not going to help me with the current charge, is it? Yeah, there could be a connection to uh, similar allegations against you. Well, Mandy Shaw had a record knocked about on the criminal fringes. Vivian's squeaky clean. I don't see the connection. You say Mandy's never even heard of her. Oh, that's right. Well, what about the gang who put her up to? Career criminals, Frank Payton's lot. Dave Jackman, Terry Wills. Nasty bunch. Any of those have a connection to Vivian Keane, I wonder? Uh, Leeds is their patch. Seems unlikely. They rob banks. They don't work on them. I'll get more whiskey. Look, there is one avenue of inquiry you can help me with. People at the bank remember Vivian Keane celebrating when her divorce came through. Well, how can I help? Well, D.I. Shiner has got her driving licence down at the station. An issuing tax office could trace her maiden name through that. Nothing wrong with seeing this shrink, you know, Bernard. It's only to see if, if I'm going mad. No. Well, no. There's no wrong with me. It's just you reach certain stages in life where you take stock and you look around and you wonder where all the dreams went. Dreams? The desires you once had. You think, why not live again? Why not try for the moon? Why not dream? Why not? Because you're driving me bonkers, that's why not. Mr. Script, I am going to say a series of words. After each, I want you instinctively to say the first thing that comes to mind. Understood. A birth. Death. Living. Dying. Flowers. Funeral. Hmm. Interesting. I'm an undertaker. Ah. Ah. Miss Vivian Keane. Puzzling, isn't it? Maybe she never married. Just used the name Mrs. Keane for the sake of a child. Well, if she wasn't married, why celebrate a divorce? All right, if she was married, who was her husband? And what was her married name? How do we find that? As his next of kin, Doctor, am I allowed to know the results? Insofar as it can be said of any of us, your brother, Mr. Scripps, is perfectly sane. Goodbye, Mr. Scripps. You meet me in my professional capacity. I hope it is some considerable time before I meet you in yours. Light of my life, thou art of fresh and beautiful hue. How can I ever be worthy of you? Oh, no. He's not mad. He's in love. Well, you take it easy. Don't overdo things. Right. Mr. Scripps, all right, you better come in. Uh, no, just a minute. I need to see you first, Doctor. 
It's very urgent. Light of my life, vision of my hope. I'd give it all up for you, even if I was the Pope. That is awful poetry. Yes, but don't you see? This is what it's all about. He's fallen passionately in love. Hence the highs and the lows, he's smitten. Well, there's not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. I mean, do you know the object of this affection? Well, who's he been coming to see all this time? Whose waiting room has he been sitting in for days on end? Oh, no. It's as plain as a pikestaff, Doctor. He's infatuated with you. <sighs> Bernard, you and me need to talk. Oh, Bernard, I've got to get a prescription. Now. Come on. Yeah, but... Come on. Well, she has a teenage son. Yeah, so the marriage would be, what, uh, 15, 16 years ago. Yeah, maiden name of Keen. That's K double E N. Yes. Well, I'll be very grateful. We've all done it, Bernard. Fallen for someone we can't have. We dream of the unobtainable. <laughs> Remember when I fell for Gladys Northover, the Greta Garbo of Pickering. I worship that woman from afar. Married a little bald bloke. Ran a donkey business on Skegness Beach. Broke my heart. Better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. No, Bernard. It's time to wake up. She's with someone. Nice guy. For a copper, any road. He's more her age. They're well suited. No, watch them in the pub. Perhaps if she knew how I felt, if she heard me put it into words. No, Bernard. I've read your words. It's got to stop. I'll help you. I'll help you through the pain. Thanks, Ron. As brothers go, you're not a bad lad. I think we might be getting somewhere. Great. Yeah, Vivian Keane's married name was Peyton. Her ex-husband was Frank Peyton. You're in trouble. Why? I've done all my reports. I was up till all hours. It's because you ordered this. A squad car dropped it in for you from criminal records. Yeah, well, I need it. Frank Peyton. Ex-husband of Vivian Keane. He's got form going back 20 years. My, my office, please. You can't say I didn't warn you, Mike. I mean, Merton's been investigated by a senior officer. You've no right to meddle in another inquiry. No, Phil, not now. No, it's important, Alf. Look, his face looked familiar to me, and it's come to me where I've seen it recently. When China and me went to visit Mrs. Keane, a man in a gas board uniform came to read the meter. It's him, Peyton. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Never heard of Frank Peyton. Mrs. Keane, you were married to him. He was seen by a visiting police officer in this house posing as a gas board worker. He was also seen at Sergeant Merton's house prior to your purse being found there. You're in very serious trouble. I thought I'd left him behind forever, but he traced me somehow. Threatened to ruin my career. Tell the bank that I've been married to an armed robber. 
So you agreed to frame an innocent man to save your job? He threatened to tell Richard as well. My son has absolutely no idea who his father is. And he certainly doesn't know that he's a violent criminal. I've, I've, I've worked and, and I've scrimped and I've saved to give him an honest, normal, proper life. And... Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Making a false allegation is a very serious offence. I know. I know, and I, and I hate myself. I, I, I'm sure that Dennis Merton is a fine and an honest man, and I, I'm truly, truly sorry. If you were to cooperate, we might be able to help. I'll, I'll do anything. I, I, I just don't want the past to come out. I don't think D.I. Shiner will be too happy us solving his case for him. Oh, Doctor, could I have a word? My brother Bernard feels he's made a bit of a fool of himself. I think he'd like to apologise. Oh, I'm not sure that's necessary. Please, it, it won't take long. Well, come on. There's only me and Jenny here at the moment. Hello. Without being unduly pessimistic, I think you should prepare yourselves for the possibility of a new sergeant. Sorry to interrupt, Sarge. I, uh, I just need a word with the D.I. Yes, Bellamy? Uh, Mrs. Keane's just phoned in. I got the impression something was troubling her. If she wouldn't confide in me, asked if you might drop by, sir. Did she say why? She just said she had total confidence in your impartiality. She said she trusted you, sir. Hmm. Oh. All right. Let's see what she wants. Time ages all of us eventually on the outside. But inside many of us, the fires of youth still smolder and it only takes a small spark to set them alight. It's true what they say, no fool like an old fool. And I realise now how pathetic and silly the whole thing was and I'm sorry. I won't bother you anymore. There'll always be a small corner of my heart that's especially for you. Thank you. I'm very flattered. That was really nice. Thank you, Bernie. Dr. Summerby, I wasn't talking to you. What? No, I'm talking to Jenny. Jenny? Take care, love. So that's why he kept coming back for the pills. I want to make a confession to a police officer that I trust. Confession? I've allowed myself to be part of a conspiracy to ruin Sergeant Merton's career. Go on. It's not been an easy decision. I could... That's probably him now. Just wait here and listen. What's the problem? Oh, I'm frightened. I needed to see you. Better not be losing your nerve, Viv. You know what will happen if you do. Look, I planted the purse. All you've got to do is get into that box and nail him. He's got no chance. You cow. You set me up. Hey, go! Oh, go! Oh. Who is this man? My ex-husband. Frank Payton. All charges against you will be dropped, Sergeant. Peyton will be charged with conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. He's wanted in Leeds for other inquiries as well. What about Vivian Keane? She made a false accusation. It's a serious offence. Frank Peyton was blackmailing her. It's him I want to see banged up. I'd rather we didn't go hard on her. Well, if you don't want to pursue it, we don't necessarily have to bring charges. A caution might suffice. I'd prefer that. Very well. So, Bradley, you see, by taking an impartial line, I gained Mrs. Keane's confidence, and we got to the truth. Sir. Thanks for stepping in, Alf. First-rate job.
Nice maneuver, Alf. Great to have you back, Sarge. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Ciao. Excuse me. It was an appalling thing I did. I've come to say I'm truly sorry. I've, uh, I've told Richard everything now, and uh, I've also talked to the bank, and they're prepared to keep me on. That's good. Yeah. I've been extremely lucky to get away so lightly. Yeah. Except that I haven't. Because I ruined it. Well, I think that we might have. Who knows? I paid a heavy price there. Yes. Shame. 